Good morning, everyone, on this Monday morning, um, June 7th. We give thanks to God for another lovely day after a stormy night, at least in this part of the Puget Sound. We, um, and heat wave in the Midwest, by the way, so we can be thankful we're getting some needed rain down here, over here. We gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may not have no power over me. Amen. Get our... Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. So we're kind of towards the last cha two chapters here of Grateful by Diana Butler Bass, The Transformative Power of Giving Thanks. This chapter is The Grateful Society about the we and ethics. Um, she's in the section for today, I'm going to summarize a little bit because it's um, got some modern day political com um, comparisons. So I'll just let you know that. And um, so let's react to the book <laughs> and to the circumstances and what kind of she's trying to draw out here of a, a distinction as she wrote this. But she reminds us of Rome as she starts here about the, um, the how gratitude throughout him, history has been built into society and the reciprocity um, is a deep in instinct because of that um, in the basic currency of social life, doing favors and repaying favors. Um, the most foundational definition of gratitude forms the core of familial, tribal, and political relationships, forging connections of trust, debt, debt co cooperation, and connection through large groups of people. In other words, gratitude is indelibly communal. We structure community around ideas of power, protection, production, and obligation, often linking the, those things with cosmology and religion. Gratitude is not, therefore, a free floating emotion or ethic. It exists within these communal structures and our experience of gratitude is profoundly influenced by social and political arrangements. Politically, Rome was a hierarchical pyramid with the emperor on top as the focal point in unity and faith. He was the ultimate benefactor of the Roman world, the very model of generosity, justice, provision, and civil war, civic warfare, welfare, excuse me. Everything good descended from him to the lower ranks of people, nobles, soldiers, citizens, merchants, peasants, foreigners, conquered peoples, and finally slaves. If you had food, it was because of Rome's large largesse embodied by the emperor. If you owned land, it was because Rome gave it to you. If you were happy, it was because Rome offered peace, a great a system of gifts and tribute, a structure of patronage held Rome together. The emperor bestowed gifts and all his benefactors beneficiaries returned their gratitude in the form of taxes, tithes, tributes, honor, loyalty, public works, and return favors. Gratitude was not merely warm feelings towards the benefactor, but reciprocal service and benefaction. Benefits impose a debt on the recipient that had to be discharged through the return of service or benefit. Since economic benefits flowed down, the members of each Social class took a share of themselves and a share for themselves and left less for the classes below. By the time the benefits reached the bottom rung of society, they were paltry and thinly distributed. Yet the lower down you were in the social structure, the less you received by the more you owed to those above you. Gifts flowed down, gratitude repayment flowed upward. In the same way that members of the each social class skimmed benefits flowing down, they also took their share of tribute and taxes as payback made on its way back up the pyramid in order that the emperor 
for the emperor to receive his proper portion and everyone to take theirs, taxes were inordinately high on the poor. In contemporary terms, gratitude's payback was regressive and often created huge financial debts for the lower classes. Debts of gratitude were monetary debts, not only social ones. The poorer you were, the more you were required to return to your benefactors. And this system in gratitude was a political and economic act. To refuse to pay or return favor was treason. Um, and then it, after the Roman Empire fell, he said, she says that it becomes, um, it developed into the medieval feudalism. It developed um, in a complex system of quid pro quo, tit for tat. I will do this for you, you will do this for me. With dem devastating social consequences and involving everything from destructive land practices and unjust laws to wars of insult and personal revenge. Um, Europeans struggled with the ghosts of Roman benefaction for centuries. In the 17th and 18th century, new options emerged, however, as philosophers and politicians imagined a new system of contracts and chosen obligations in politics and business. They banished gratitude in the private sphere of domestic relations. This is what we talked about in the very beginning of the book. Instead of order through benefactions and tributes, public life would be governed by covenants, contracts, political democratic process and the rule of law. Gratitude was thus pushed into the domestic sphere where it flourished. Um, and then the eventually commerce, commercial and interest overtook democratic ideals of civic life and business brought with it brokers, patrons, deal makers and tit for tat arrangements. As corporate interests grew, gratitude mutated into lobbying. By the 21st century, political action committees um, work in politics by treating po politicians as their clients and bestowing large largesse in relation to favorable policies. Let's see. The question is surprisingly stark. Will gratitude be used to undergird hierarchies of power and quid pro quo that benefit the few or will gratefulness undo unjust practices of control to enlarge the circle of benefits for all? The choice we could, we could we make could be more important than for the future of our life together. Um, and then I'm gonna throw one more thing in and then we'll actually get into some of the modern day examples probably tomorrow. But then she, she takes on the um, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen and talked about how Lady Catherine de Boer, de Bra, um, saying that wrong, sorry, I should know that better because I like this book, confronts Elizabeth Bennet at the very end of the book. Um, throughout the story, Lady Catherine was used her wealth to reward those who obey her and to punish those who do not, controlling the lives of all those who benefit, depend on her patronage. Lady Catherine is also an aunt of Mr. Darcy, whom Elizabeth has once believed haughty, but whom she now loves. A rumor that Mr. Darcy and lower status Elizabeth will soon be wed reached Lady Catherine. Outraged that her nephew would soon make the match, she confronts Elizabeth Bennet. Um, and Elizabeth will not confirm the rumor because it's not true, but she also refuses to submit to Lady Catherine's demands. If I am, if I am that choice, why may I not accept him, she says. Lady Catherine flies into a rage saying that such a marriage would be a disgrace and calling Elizabeth an obstinate headstrong girl who has undesirable family connections would make a mockery of Mr. Darcy's high birth and force him into from polite society. She predicts terrible consequences of Elizabeth Mary's Darcy, consequences that Lady Catherine herself will help bring about. She attempts to intimidate Elizabeth by pointing out her inferior birth. Lady Catherine accuses Elizabeth of ingratitude since she had previously welcomed the young woman into her own table. Is there nothing due to me on that score, she says. Elizabeth is resolute. She will not promise to refuse an offer of marriage. A furious Lady Catherine finishes her tirade. You refu refuse then to oblige me. You refuse to obey the claims of duty, honor, and gratitude. You have determined to ruin him in the opinion of his friends and make him a, the contempt of the world. Elizabeth replies, neither duty nor honor nor gratitude has any possible claim on me in the present instance. If Mr. Darcy asks Elizabeth, she will say yes, this implied. Lady Catherine cuts her off. I take no leave of you, Miss Bennett. I send no compliments to your mother. You deserve no such attention. I am seriously displeased. Jane Austen's novel often portray conflicts between structures of gratitude. Just left a little bit. 
in Pride and Prejudice, Lady Catherine embodies public gratitude that reflects duties of benefit and obligation, a world where gratitude is a transaction in a hierarchical society. Austin sharply criticized that form of gratitude, showing Lady Catherine as cruelly vengeful, using her status to vindictively assert her superiority. And that in the, is the problem with gratitude in politics, the problem that 18th century people experienced and tried to reform. In transactional gratitude, there are often punitive ramifications for beneficiaries, while privilege on the benefactor side continues to assert control, and neither of these things is good for society. So she's setting this up here for the rest of her chapter, but um, I thought just thinking back in Rome and the medieval times of the, of the benefits flowing down, the gratitude flowing up, and everybody kind of taking their peace along the way, um, in the medieval serfdom and things like that, where Luther would have been um, working on of how people, like even the church became dependent on that system of flowing down and flowing up when people could actually buy bishopdoms or cardinalships in the church, um, buy parishes for their, um, I mean, thinking about even the Darcy's, they had the parish and they, they could, you know, a third son could get a parishship so he would be comfortable, live well, um, but he wasn't going to inherit. So there's the, those things you see of um, the, the gratitude and the favor going back and forth and setting it up. And then the church, it ended up being a bunch of people serving in the church, in the Roman Catholic church who had no care at all about um, the Bible or the word of God. They wanted to be set up politically when you combine the two as well. So in our Christian history, we're seeing a lot of that in the structures of the church. And biblically, we're also going to see a lot of that too. Think of David um, with you know, the whole Uriah situation in Bathsheba. Um, that didn't go so well. Of you know, He used his power for um, getting what he wanted. But then also thinking of like Joseph uh, uh, and um, Egypt and that whole story of how you know you have the pharaoh you have joseph you have uh, this group of people that are growing in power and they're rivaling in numbers and and the pharaoh is not getting out of them what he wants and so he subjugates them into slavery to control and get more up on the top because they were growing and flourishing so much or even um lot and um jacob right with the 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 sheep and you know your i'm your uncle i'm your benefactor um, here's my daughters, you need to work, but I also need to get my peace and, and how the trickster Jacob from the very, from the womb on is tricking kind of the way through and how God's blessing that kind of working outside of the system of gratitude. So then where does that come in to the transactional gratitude versus, um, not the quid pro quo realities of kind of breaking that system and Christ does that. We don't get what we deserve, um, and we don't give what we should. <laughs> we give Christ our, you know, our sins. And yes, we are offering, and, and we're teaching, we're learning about um, gratitude in the, and generosity in the in the church. Generosity is um, a sign of spiritual health in in so many ways. And but when we come into church, it's not a, I will only give um, blessing if you give this to God, or God will only bless if this happens. It is a, a, not a tit for tat. It's, um, we get all of Christ. It's good. I mean, <laughs> that, it's an exchange in that way. We get all of God, Christ's innocent blessedness and righteousness, and he gets all of our our sin and brokenness and despair. Um, but when it get, comes to him, it doesn't get filtered down into other people. Like sometimes when we are feeling that our gratitude and our kind of vices get filtered down and filtered up as others kind of need to suffer like that. But with Christ, they're taken away and the system's broken. There is, um, there's only the, the, it's not a, now you must show me that you are grateful. Now you must show me that you are appreciative. Now you must show me that you are thankful for all I've done. There's not a must in our equation with Christ. The, the must has been taken away. The must was the law, the shoulds, the musts that you will respond with Christ. It is, um, you're free to be 
who you are, to live in the world, to bear fruit. Um, and the fruit is a, a um, it's not a condition on receiving the blessing. It's a response to the blessing. Um, and it's not, there's not a fear that you'll lose the, the blessing if you're not bearing the fruit in the same way that there is in the system. So setting, I mean, I think it's helpful how she's showing us that flow down and flow up and then we'll, she'll get into some, um, tomorrow we'll kind of skim through those quick, the, um, some modern examples of, of some flowing down and flowing up and where there's, there's um, concern when that happens. If somebody's on the bottom of that receiving or somebody's on the top of that receiving the gratitude, they're both power plays and who has power and, so look at that in our lives. Who has power in this circumstance? And then look at how Christ does things. Um, we live in the world. It's going to be, we have to realize those dynamics. The Bible shows us those dynamics are real and that we are going to interact with them. And we'll fall prey to them or we'll use them for our benefit or sometimes for the good of others. I'm not saying they're always bad, but um, to be aware and then knowing that that kind of hustle, that um, tit for tat is not how Christ works with you. He fully comes to you, not because you have figured it all out or because you have a lot to offer, but because you're loved. Um, and, and for that, we give thanks that God doesn't play this um, gratitude um, transactional game with us. Be still and know that I am God. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. We give thanks for the rain that soaks our dry drought ridden area and pray that it falls upon the other areas that are in such need of that precipitation for the current season but also for the upcoming danger that could bring lord sustain us in the midst of this time of what our world needs we also thank you for sustaining us helping us understand the structures around us and where we fit in them um, where we fall prey to them and where we feed into them, where we can break them. Um, and the wisdom to know the difference. Thank you for the great literature that can um, shed light on some of those perspectives that we can have and help us struggle with, with gratitude and what it means, Lord. Um, and recognize when maybe it's not true gratitude when it's an obligation, when it's transactional. We can slap a label on things, Lord, but are they really what we say they are? Um, and we give thanks that your grace is <laughs> what it says, that it, it sustains and it gives life and it frees. Um, and we give thanks that you work in that way in our lives. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we pray. We ask you to be with those in our community, in our world, in need of that healing and that forgiveness, who are yearning to be new creations and um, are being gathered in by you for the care that is needed. May you reach the, the lives that need to be reached this day, Lord, in whatever way that is needed. For the gifts of relationship with others, we pray. We give thanks for for children who visit and fill our house with laughter and stories and, and grand meals. We give thanks for births that we are waiting for with anticipation or that have arrived for the, the grandchild or the great grandchild. Um, thank you, Lord, for those gifts. We give thanks for sisters and brothers to visit we give thanks for um, the relationships you have in our life, Lord. And may we um, remember 
with gratitude, um, the gifted gifts that they are to us. For the communion of faith in your church, we pray, Lord, help us to um, gather, help us to be in community, help us to know one another and, and to hold that knowledge and in gratitude and also in understanding that you do bring together a wide variety of people into your church and we um, are blessed for that. It doesn't make things easy all the time, Lord, but it makes things blessed. It makes things real. Um, and you call us to be real and to be um, have integrity in our belief and in our lives. So thank you for that and help us to continue, continue to be aware of our community of faith around us. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris. We pray for our branches of government, both federally and in our state here of Washington. We ask you to be with us in this, these phases of opening up and and we pray especially for um, the challenges that are still before us. There will always be challenges, Lord, and we'll always need to ask for your help and provision. Be our light. Be the strong word in our, our day that um, frees us from the other words that would harm us and harm others. For people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare or the... Um, the pandemic, we pray, we ask you to be with Miramar, with Israel and Palestine. We ask you to be with all the countries where COVID is continuing to take life after life after life, including our own, but also we give thanks for the hope that some of us are feeling right now. Um, as we see things like the Delta variant and things like that, Lord, in, in Britain, and it, it causes worry and as we wonder what um, what waves or realities will come, we ask you to calm our fears and provide for us in our need. For all who work for peace and international harmony, we thank you, Lord. And for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, we ask that you remind us of the importance of conservation and of care for the planet that you have given us. Make us to be good stewards, Lord. For the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, continue to support and um, help us thrive, Lord, in so many ways. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where to go. we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen.